Welcome to the Honeymoon Mindset Podcast. Even with kids, you can have a honeymoon mindset. We are your hosts, Kimberly Mullen and James Deppa. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Honeymoon Mindset with Kids. I am James, and welcoming back the co host of the show, Kimberly. How are you doing, Kimberly? Hello, I'm doing good, James. Thank you for covering for me for those few weeks. I really appreciate it. Hey, I got your back. You're a friend, <laughs> your family, so of course it's what we do. That's how we help. And yes, when you flew over our house, I did wave and say hi. <laughs> Thank you. Unfortunately, you went to Green Bay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I gotta say, go Vikings. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm a big Packers fan. <laughs> oh, didn't know that about you. Yeah, we're going to have to have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to put a little wager when they play each other this year. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, yes, I've we talked about while you were unable to participate because of unfortunate circumstances that took you away from us. Mm-hmm. That's life. It is. You know, give each other's hugs. The first one we talked about the importance and being grateful for what we have. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I don't remember the other ones. We're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I know last week you did about teens. Teens, yes, because yeah, I that figured that'd be one. a good one. Because yeah, teens do need the honeymoon honeymoon mindset, and it starts when they're young. Yes, and absolutely. Teens can be difficult. They got so much going on, and that sort of leads into this week's topic or this yes. next episode of body image our society has so much of what one should look like how one should be mm-hmm. that it creates such a false sense of security false sense of hope for not just young ladies i know it's probably more of an issue for girls than boys but boys have that too oh it's for everyone everyone yeah and it's it's heartbreaking really it's so frustrating it's so hard to raise kids in a society that's making them feel like they're less than because of the way they look Mm -hmm. and i would say it even starts at a almost as a newborn I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I say that because you think about it, how impressionable are kids from zero to two? That's the most impressionable ages because they're Absolutely. going through so much change and that brain is doing so much evolving. Is that the right word or growing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That even if you have it on the TV, the radio or something on your phone, Magazines you know, pick, laying around, whatever it is. They may not comprehend it at that moment because they're not cognitively conscious at that moment. They're just a fight and flight mode pretty much at that right. stage. But they're still getting that message in their subconscious mind. So that's where I say it starts even when they're younger yeah, as a baby. Unfortunately. unfortunately, it does get in there. I mean, I do love how free toddlers are, that they don't think twice about stripping down naked and running down the street. Right. But at some point, it is getting in there for sure and coming back out later. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, oh, to be a toddler and not care who sees you naked, what you look like, <laughs> <laughs> if your hair is brushed. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you a question, Kimberly. Since your kids are younger than mine, just by a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> when did your kids like Sammy or Sydney start to become con- conscious of their body and what it looks like or have they yet? Um, they have and the first signs I noticed of it were in kindergarten for my oldest. Okay. Um, I feel like as soon as they were constantly around like we always had our core group of friends we hung out with. Right. Yeah. And I was very very lucky and when I got pregnant my main group of four or five other friends that I hung out with all got pregnant within that year. Nice. So it was really fun to have our kids from like pregnancy to 
you know, even still now hanging out with each other. Mm-hmm. And they grew up very close. But as soon as like school started, they all were in different districts and had to make new friends in school. And that's when she started coming home and making little comments that made me realize, like, even if it wasn't right away about the body, it was about the clothes she wore or right. her art wasn't good enough in school, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like the other kids already were picking on each other. And it made me really sad. So where was that coming from? Was that coming from other students, teachers, or some Other students. Okay. Yeah. Where, you know, she came home one time and she just kept saying, the other kids say Dora's for babies. And she used to love Dora. Okay. And I was like, well, this is interesting. I don't know where this is coming from or why kids are already starting this. And... And I just kept being like, well, you don't have to tell them you like Dora. Like, it's such a hard, fine line as a parent, whereas on one hand, I want to be like, you can like what you like and you stand up for yourself and be like, I like Dora and screw you. And on the other hand, wanting to protect them from having to be made fun of or or getting made fun of and being like, well, just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to realize she had images of Dora on her sneakers. And I was like, oh, you can't just hide the fact that you like Dora. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oops. So I put away her shoes every night and just didn't even think about it. Yeah. But but that's, yeah, it was already in kindergarten where things like that started. And um, for her, a lot, well, she was the shortest girl in her class. Okay. There was one boy shorter than her. And that she got very self-conscious about that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and that's something that has stuck with her that, you know, I do my best as a parent to to talk to her about the fact that everybody grows at different rates. Everybody's different. Right. You know, just the trust me, the tallest girl fails out of place and awkward too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do. I have friends who have very tall children who tell me that you know their daughter feels very insecure about how tall she is and the fact that people unintentionally comment on it Mm -hmm. like you know you don't see somebody for a while and then you meet up with them and you're just like oh wow look how tall you got she can see her daughter like kind of shrivel into herself because they're pointing out what makes her insecure and right even just yesterday we were at a store and my girls are just about three years apart and somebody asked if they were twins and right away my oldest was like see i told you i'm short if they think i'm twins with her (laughs) you know i'm like oh (laughs) people don't mean to make these comments right they don't know it's going to affect them yeah and there's that age which is surprising it's like you're just making an observation and how that affects somebody's appearance or makes them self-conscious about their appearance and it's nothing that they did wrong it's just and even the lady that made the comment about the girls it's like yeah no she's just making a comment it's like right and my middle child was sitting down so she couldn't see the height difference between Mm -hmm. them and she just looked at their faces and their long curly hair and was like oh you two twins (laughs) sammy was not amused no no no, I'm saying it's pretty vocal. It. So. <laughs> well, it's hard. It's yeah. so, so hard when society values in, like, you know, you can't be too tall, but you can't be too short. You can't yeah. be overweight, but you can't be skinny. I mean, I myself was definitely made fun of for being way too skinny. Yeah, I remember my and, father-in-law, my first father-in-law. Well, I never met Beth's dad, so my first wife's dad and he's like oh your skin is a rail he made the comment and i remember that was affecting affected me and how i looked and that was Mm. 1920 at that age oh wow so yeah i mean i've had people say to me oh i would not wear those jeans or those pants if i was that skinny and stuff like that you know Mm -hmm. for some reason people think Oh, yeah, they know it's not okay to make fun of overweight people, 
but for some reason they well i was growing up they thought it was okay to make fun of me because i was skinny like that shouldn't mm. affect me as badly and right like, it did the people called me anorexic bones all kinds of names Ooh. yeah i mean i can't say anything i remember when i was a dumb teen kid you say that mm -hmm. stuff kids say that stuff because they do not in sometimes yes it is intentional but sometimes yeah. it's just not intentional they're just making comments or they're they're verbalizing their observations versus right. internally right making the observation when was i've been as we're talking here about body image and i'm trying to think about my kids because it's been so many years since they're the age of your kids mm -hmm. when was the first time they're start starting to compare themselves to something on tv or in a magazine mm, that's a good question i haven't noticed my kids really do that i know they're affected by when other people verbally say things to them yeah um i know they watch shows and they want to be like those girls like they want to right. be the best gymnast like the girl in the show they're watching or mm -hmm. You know, they watch one show where a girl's a football player. They're like, I could do that. I want to play football, you know, right. stuff like that. But I don't, can't think of a time where they're like, well, I'm not that good or I don't look like her or. Yeah. The only thing for mm. me is boys. I remember the mm -hmm. twins, they're watching, I don't know if it was like Bob the Builder or somewhere where the character had to be strong and the, they had to be that's where it's like oh i need to do this so i can be really strong and mm. you know that was like four or five years old where they're comparing themselves to this cartoon character yeah and wanting to do stuff to get stronger and stuff i guess i noticed it more in my boys the twins oh, versus my daughter i and mean I, I know my kids definitely want to be like the characters i guess i just haven't noticed it as a negative thing yet where i feel like they don't think they're good enough to be yeah. like that character so is that where it really starts is through cartoons mm. and through those yeah. early shows to where they start comparing well there are some cartoons i won't even let them watch oh I'm yeah like, no, no. nope <laughs> some of the kids i see on the school bus i just shake my head it's like wow okay right and yeah so what is the correct body image for a person? A healthy one. And what so does that like, mean, a healthy one? Everyone is so different, and everyone grows at different rates. Everyone's born differently. Some are stockier than others. Some, But if you're mm -hmm. exercising, you're eating right, and that's your normal body, you know, I mean, if you're just sitting on the couch all day, because, you know, some parents do let their kids sit on the couch all day, play video yeah. games, watch TV, and eat the junk food all day. Mm -hmm. That happens. That's not a healthy body. But what we should be promoting is getting outside, exercising, oh, yeah. eating your fruits and vegetables. And I'm not saying, like, I give my kids junk. I do. Yeah, I do. I did, too. I balance it out. I don't give them nearly as much as I got as a kid. That's for sure. But like people will say to me all the time, because I am such a skinny person, they assume I'm healthy. I'm like, I grew up eating devil dogs and <laughs> McDonald's. Like my innards are not healthy. I mean, I do my best to make sure they are now as an adult, but yeah, everyone just assumed like um, when I was pregnant with my second, I tested positive for, um, I can't think of the right term for it, but diabetes while you're pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, everyone was shocked, all my friends. They're like, there's no way. You eat organically. You eat, um, you know, you're the healthiest person I know. I'm like, yeah, I buy organic food and I eat it. I also stop at the fast food place. <laughs> and yeah. I also buy chocolate and chips while I'm buying my organic food foods like yeah. i'm not 100 percent healthy yeah you think and of sugar is my addiction mm -hmm. you <laughs> think of those to be. those cholesterol commercials where they show this thin skinny guy and their cholesterol is through the roof and mm -hmm. the more beast one and it's lower it's like no you can't go by just appearance you can't 
So you really have to promote a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And you can usually tell by the way somebody's skin glows, if they're drinking enough water, if mm -hmm. they're eating healthy. I mean, not that I can look at somebody and 100% read them, but right. the energy they have, you know, like if somebody is considered what this society would consider overweight, mm -hmm. but they're healthy, I applaud them. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's I where... just want my kids to know that people come in different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And that's okay. You're the perfect size for how you, you mm -hmm. know, as long as you're doing what you can to be healthy. Yeah. And that's why as, as you're talking about that, and as I, after I asked the question, what's normal? I'm thinking of what the, the FDA or the government guidelines for what a healthy kid is and a healthy person. And it is, and it's like, I understand that's just a guideline. And I know it's a mm -hmm. good guideline to start off based off of, but that's where it's like, you go, hey, like you're saying, everybody's different. Everybody's lifestyle is different. Exactly. And that's where a good body image, first off, we need to start talking to kids at a younger age is that that's not normal. Luckily right. for me, when my kids were growing up, I was doing a lot of advertising advertising and marketing stuff mm -hmm. so I was doing a little bit of the Photoshop I understood some stuff how they did it I had some of the insider knowledge and so when my kids were looking at it's like that's not real you got to remember that they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make something look the way it does exactly you know they're doing airbrushing or they're Mm -hmm. tipping or tucking and they know how to move people with the camera and other things to make it appear what's not real or appear what's real what really isn't and then they set these high standards for something that is completely impossible yeah yeah because do you remember what was it maybe 10 12 where the modeling industry actually got a huge ding mm-hmm where they were saying the models, the runway models were way too thin and presenting a, a false sense of hope or... Yes. Because they yes. asked. It, and it, it is false. And there was a, on Facebook, it, it was many years ago, and I know I shared it. I don't know if I could find it now, but there was a post going around where it showed the original pictures the model took Mm -hmm. compared to the final image that went in the magazine and showed oh, the yeah. airbrushing, exactly what they did, how they made her cheeks look like they were more sucked in, how they, what they did with makeup to make it look like she had a six pack, even though she didn't, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've and seen those before and afters. That was so disturbing to me to be like, okay, you're taking this real beautiful person and telling her she's not good enough as she is. Mm-hmm making all these quote unquote corrections to her face and her body and saying that's what she should be. Right. Yeah. And there's, a, yeah. And you look at the before, it's like, okay, and what's wrong with this lady? Right. Or this, and then they're this guy it as that's nothing. who she really is. And that's what you should strive to be too. When we don't walk around getting airbrushed and photoshopped every day. <laughs> <laughs> no. It pisses me off. Yes. I don't want my kids to, to feel they have to live up to that. No. And there also was a time where, you, you know, you were talking about how the model industry really took a ding. Mm hmm It kind of got flipped around to be making fun of skinny people now. Oh, yes. That, that I was remember there were so many posts going around Facebook saying, you know, putting a picture of a skinny model and being like, that's not real. That's disgusting. Look at, you know, yeah. look at me. And I'm like, okay, now we don't have to bash the skinny people though. Mm -hmm. Can we accept that we're all beautiful as we are? Yeah. And I not it's skinny versus overweight people or curvy people like curves are beautiful. And yes, they are absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean somebody who's skinny is not beautiful. Right. Yeah, I remember that. So then I started that. getting super defensive about that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too. And then, yeah, skinny was bad or there's something wrong with you. And there. Yeah, it totally got flipped. Like, mm -hmm. And I get that it needed to be called out that um, 
you know, curvy people had every right to stand up and say, hey, we have curves and we're proud. And right. I support that 1,000%. But not if, when you turn around and say, look at that skinny, ugly bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yep. And I'm like, you know, I, I called out a good friend of mine for posting something like that because I was like, you are curvy and you are voluptuous and you are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. But I do not appreciate that you just made fun of people like me. All right. And she was like, you're right, you're right. You know, I didn't I didn't think of it like that. I just get so defensive because I've been told my whole life I'm overweight. And you know, I'm like, well, you know, just know that everybody's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So how do we talk to our kids about body image and what's normal and what's not? When they see mm-hmm. all these images everywhere, me, social media on billboards everywhere, even the people at McDonald's or whatever, they're, they're models there, and it's like they're looking a certain way. How do we address that when it's posted everywhere and anywhere that can be? Um, I haven't quite had to do that yet, but I believe that I will look up these things these articles and show them the beginning and the end and show them look that's not real and we can't strive for something that's not real and explain to them about what airbrushing and photoshopping Mm -hmm. is and show them you know this just is not real and we talked I do already talk to them a ton about the fact that everybody is different and you know how boring would this world be if we were all five seven 115 pounds, you know, (laughs) all perfectly shaped and all blonde haired, blue eyed. And we talk about that a lot. We talk about, you know, my oldest is coming into puberty and we can Mm -hmm. do a whole nother episode on that sometime. But oh, yes, I got her a series of books and the book, the series actually um, is recommended to start at four years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I wish I had thought to get these all along. Mm-hmm. You know, so now my youngest are getting to see them at much younger ages. And it's really cool. It talks all about body, how it develops. Um, you know, the one she's on now is the last one for specifically puberty and how the changes to expect. And I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, that's, uh, to the that's awesome. Um, it's a great idea. I really like them. They, they're they for boys and girls. And, I, you know, they have ones that are only for girls and only for boys and the changes they'll go through. But I wanted one that was for both, A, because I have a boy and eventually he's going to be reading them too, right? Right. But more so, even if I only had girls, I would want one that explains the boy's body too. I think it's important that we understand each other. Oh, I agree. As you're talking um, about that, looking at those pictures, I would say – Something I wish I did with my kids when they're younger is pull up two pictures, two random photos somewhere of someone that's really, really skinny and somebody that's bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, what do you see? But this is them. Mm. You know, what? how do you feel about this? And how do you feel about that? That way they can discuss it. It becomes a discussion. Oh, that's great. You know, and then as they're talking about body image it's like okay now which one would you where would you want to be and they're two extremes it's like i want to be in the middle okay so mm-hmm. how are you going to do that where are you going to get your information and how are we going to deal with that you know then you can just pull up random ads it's like look at this where are you going to find your happiness with your body right you're, you you got to find that inside and your comfortability inside you and if you don't feel comfortable what are you going to do about it and mm-hmm. make sh- making sure those choices are healthy choices so we will wrap it up here we'll turn this into two episodes folks yes yeah.